one-step equations. So remember from our last video, an equation is something we can solve for the pronumeral, usually, but in this case, yes, we'll be able to solve it. And to do that, we need those opposite operations to get the pronumeral on its own in an equation. So let's have a look at one. X minus four equals 10. And in our last video, you saw me use the seesaw analogy where the equal sign was the middle of our seesaw and it's perfectly balanced right now. As long as we do something to both sides of an equation, it'll be fine, it'll stay balanced, but we have to do the same thing to both sides. And the goal is to get the pronumeral on its own. Okay, so we need to get the pronumeral on its own. So in this case, our pronumeral is X, and we need to get it by itself. And to do that, let's have a look. It's on the left-hand side, but it's got a minus four with it. We need to get rid of that minus four. And to get rid of a minus four, we need to do the opposite. And the opposite of minusing four is adding four. Remember, it's a seesaw, we need to balance it out. So we're gonna plus four to the other side as well. Because by doing that, minus four plus four gives us zero. So on the next line, the first thing I like to do is write the equal sign underneath the equal sign that I already have. Then I write the things that we leave behind. So minus four plus four is zero, it's gone. And we're just left with the X. And that's exactly what we want. And 10 plus four, is 14 and now we can see the solution to this equation is that x equals 14 and it should make sense because 14 minus 4 does equal 10. And these are called one-step equations because it only takes one step to actually solve them. Let's have a look at a few more. Let's look at x plus 3 equals 10. So we're trying to get that pronumeral on its own. The plus 3 is in the way of it being on its own. So we're going to minus 3. But whatever you do to one side, you've got to do the other side. Because the 3 minus 3 will be 0. Remember, equals under equals. On the left hand side of the equal sign, we're left with just x. And 10 minus 3 is 7. So x has to equal 7. And you can double check. Does 7 plus 3 equal 10? It does. Let's have a look at another one. x plus 7 equals 3. So again, we're trying to get x by itself. The plus 7 is in the way. Let's get rid of that plus 7 by doing the opposite of plusing 7, which is minusing 7. But if you do to one side, you have to do the other side of the equal sign. Because 7 minus 7 is going to be 0. First thing we do is write the equals under the equals. On the left-hand side of the equals, we're just left with the x. And 3 minus 7, well, that's minus 4. And that's our answer. Let's look at another one. 6x equals 42. This one's a little bit different because there is no plus or minus. But what does 6x mean? If you remember in algebra, when a number and a pronumeral are written next to each other, it means multiplication. And what's the opposite of multiplication? Well, that's division. So the opposite of multiplying x by 6 would be dividing it by 6. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. Now, the reason this cancels out is because 6 divided by 6 is 1. Equals under equals. And if it's 1, we're just left with 1x. But we don't write 1x, we just write x. And we've successfully got the pronumeral on its own. And 42 divided by 6 is 7. And you can double check if that's right. Is 6 times 7 42? It is. All right, one more x divided by 7 equals 8. Alright, now the opposite of dividing by 7 would be to multiply by 7. 
So that's what we're going to do to both sides. We're going to multiply that side by 7 and that side by 7. I'm just going to show you the long way and why this cancels out. So just over here, let's just have a look at 7 times x over 7. Another way to write 7 would be to write 7 over 1. And hopefully you remember, multiplying two fractions, we just multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. So 7 times x is 7x over 1 times 7 is 7. And now, 7 divided by 7 is 1, and we're left with 1x, but we don't have to write 1x, we can just write x. So that's why whenever you multiply a fraction by its denominator, it'll cancel out with this one, because it's, it's like multiplying the numerator only, because the denominator here is like over 1. So that's why when you do this, they simplify to 1, so equals under equals, and we're just left with x, and 8 times 7 is 56. You can always check if you're right, because 56 divided by 7 is equal to 8. Thank you.